little tiny knife. I'm gonna take this thing down without batoning. Okay, let's let's see how she goes. All right. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap. And uh, I recently did a video on, I think the title was something like, why I think batoning is overrated. And the whole point of the video was to make the argument that you're better off with a relative, for the price you can pay for an indestructible knife, full tang indestructible knife that you can baton the hell out of and not, not break, not chip, not crack, not, not compromise. Uh, you can do a lot more with a relatively inexpensive knife like this Mora, which I think you can get these for like 20 or $30 nowadays. It says Frost, Mora, Sweden, Costal, High Carbon. This is like, a, I guess, if you went to Google a Mora Companion, I think that would be analogous to that, right? Three and a half inch knife, might even be four inch blade, but if, you know, basically three, four inch blade sort of thing uh, from top to bottom, about three quarters of an inch that way. And uh, relatively, not the thickest spine in the world. I can't believe the knives I see some of these knife review guys uh, promoting as like good bushcraft knife. These giant, they're basically weapons, right? You don't need a weapon when you're in the woods. There's, there's no one fighting you. You need a tool, a really useful tool. And if, it, if it's a knife tool, you need it to work well like a knife. You bring a saw with your knife, and there you've got something. So the argument in that video was that if you've got a really good knife, that's about, you know, basically the length of a palm, this sort of thing. This is a very versatile knife, does a lot of knife things really well. And then this saw will basically do all your not knife things better than any kind of knife can do. <laughs> right? This will outperform a super beefy strong knife in limbing, felling trees, and so on and so forth. And this will take down trees you could never fell by batoning uh, a beefy heavy knife. Okay. So anyway, in that video, uh, I showed how to use uh, a relatively small knife like this to take down trees trees you would use in a structural sense for building shelters okay the, the argument is always with these big bite beefy knives that you know you only got one knife and you have to be able to use that knife to build a shelter um why you'd be in a situation where you only had a knife right i've always got a knife and a folding saw and i also always have a really good pocket knife right that in a lot of ways let me just put the saw away here My pocket knife usually resembles the folding knife in its dimensions, and I, I make sure it can do all the same things it can do. I'm going to do a video on pocket knives one of these days. Uh, I need sort of good weather because I got to have my hands out, and I can't can't be like really cold because my hands will go numb, and I got to have my hands out for a long time to do a video like that. But this pocket knife also has a saw on it and a whole bunch of other tools, right? So I, this is my backup knife, but it's also a toolkit. It has all kinds of tools. Um, so I've got a backup for my knife, right? But the argument I made is that for this sort of wrist thick, two finger thick, you know, two finger thick and wrist, th three finger thick, sort of wrist thick uh, trees, you can take them down with a knife like this without batoning. You don't need to baton your knife. So you don't need a super knife that can take all the batoning in the world. Can a knife like this take batoning? I've batoned this knife. Light batoning, like if you were you were making a, a clever sort of trap and you were just trying to do put little notches and stuff in a piece of wood light batoning yeah you can do that for this with this sort of thing no problem but the argument these guys are making is you're you're splitting wood and you're doing all this sort of stuff with your knife why are you splitting wood with your knife i mean just the idea that you've got a piece of firewood that was cut by a chainsaw probably just go out into the woods with just your knife and see how many situations you're in where you're actually splitting wood like they do in these knife reviews where they have a section of firewood which was cut by a chainsaw and then they're splitting that into kindling okay now imagine you're in the woods is that how you make a fire think about that right i never make a fire that way in the woods you break little branches off of trees you make a pile of little branches you get that going you add some more branches and more branches and more branches and eventually if it's big enough you knock down a dead tree and you just smash that up and you throw it on top of it you're just making stuff with dead wood that you can find laying around you're not doing all that stuff so you know the idea that you need this super knife to do all that stuff is ridiculous these guys are just trying to sell you knives 
Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm getting off topic here because I'm, I'm very frustrated with this whole line of arguments. A bad argument, it's a salesman's argument, it's a salesperson's argument, it's not an outdoorsman's argument, or a survivalist argument, or a bushcrafter's argument. It's a sales, it's a knife salesperson's argument, okay? So anyway, in that video that I just did recently, I, I took down some uh, trees, but most of them were um, uh, softwood trees, spruce trees. I made the argument in the video that they're actually harder to take down than hardwood trees. That softwood trees, because of the way the grain works and so on and so forth, um, they can be, they just don't behave the way hardwood trees here are. So here I am in a sort of a grove of maple trees. It's one of the hardest woods that grows in the woods where I live. You can find the odd oak. Um, ash is extraordinarily rare where I live. So basically, Maple is the, is the thing sort of thing, right? I'm sure there's harder things, but in terms of what's abundant, you know, here we got maple, we got birch, and we got spruce trees and fir trees and hemlocks, and you know, but that's pretty much it. Anyway, I thought I'd take down some of these two finger thick and wrist thick uh, maple trees with just my knife without batoning, just to show you how easy it is to do. And these are, I mean, the tree that this camera here is attached to a, uh, a, a maple tree that's about three fingers thick at the base and it's almost 30 feet high all right so this is the kind of tree you would use to build a survival structure if you were if you were in a situation where you needed to do that okay so i'm going to take down some trees like that varying diameters using just my knife without batoning to show how unbelievably it is unbelievably easy it is just for those people that thought oh you're using spruce and that's soft and it's easy uh, I'm going to show how easy it is to take down the, the hardest tree I've got around, right? But it's got a straight grain, so it actually behaves when you're bending and doing all that sort of stuff. So uh, let me get the camera set up and, and show you what this is all about. Okay, so here we got almost a two-inch maple. I got this this tree sort of in the way, so I'll, I'll get rid of this guy. This that's a one-incher. No problem to go through that guy. Okay. Well, now we got a substantial tree. This thing's about oh 25, 30 feet high. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just work it a little bit, right, just bend it down a little bit, right, get my weight on it, like that, okay, make sure the camera angle's right, I think that's okay, okay, so now I got some real, I got this bent over properly, got some real weight on it, Right, so now I take my knife and just work it in. Now, in the time it would take you, remember, you've only got your knife, right? You haven't got a folding saw. <laughs> That's the scenario, right? To make a baton and baton this tree, I'm through it, right? That's a substantial piece of wood, right? That's it's about two inches in diameter. And I went through that like a hot knife through butter, as the old uh, Ginsu knife commercials used to say. It was nothing, and this is strong maple hardwood. Okay, no batoning needed. No risk to my knife. No risk to my edge. Let's find a more substantial tree than this. If you were making a shelter, this would be all you'd need. Well, let's go bigger. All right, so here we got a more substantial tree. This is about, about three inches in diameter. Same as the same as the one we just broke broke off sort of thing. Just gonna get that out of the way. This is a green tree. All right. Get some of these branches out of the way. Okay, so we got a substantial tree here, right? Three inches wide at least. All right, now it's gonna put my knife away for a second. Safely away. Just get a little bend on this. Hopefully we don't break this tree off. Hung up on a lot of branches, so it's being a bit uh, difficult. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's good. All right, so we got a good bend in that. Okay, I got sort of leaning leaning on it with my belly, right? So there's an incredible amount of sort of energy loaded up in this now, and it's just begging to be released, right? That's a sharp sharp knife, sure. Move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. 
you know, these knives come sharp, but much more important than, you know, it's another thing, the funny thing to do with knife reviews, talk about how sharp the knife is. Well, what are you gonna do in a year when it's not sharp, right? More important to know how to sharpen a knife, right? That's a much more useful skill. There you know, how, how hard was that, right? We're through that in no time. Again, in the time it would take you to get a baton together, to baton this, and frig around with that batoning it, I'm through it. Okay, look at the thickness of that. I don't know how well that comes off across the camera. Let me grab the camera here. Look at the thickness of that. Okay, that's a three inch, or close to it, piece of wood, right? That's a wood you could use for a ladder, you could use for a ladder rung, for a bed, for a structure, for a bent over wiki up roof, lean to, whatever. Okay, that's gonna do the job. And I took it down fast using just this little knife without any batoning and no need for an ax or a saw. Now, it's always good to have an ax or a saw with you, but my point is to speak to the argument that you need some super knife so you can baton the hell out of it. I just don't get it. <laughs> I just do not get it. I thought to make the point just a little more pointy, why not use my pocket knife? Why not show you that you can take a tree down like this with a pocket knife? <laughs> <laughs> with the bending technique. Just a hammer at home. Now, I mean, this is, uh, what's it called? Victorian Ox Swiss made. I think this is a German army pocket knife or Swiss army pocket knife or, I don't know, maybe you know what that logo means. Something European. Um, anyway, it's sharp. These come with serrated blades. I'm gonna do a video on pocket knives at some point. Uh, I don't like serrated bl blades, so I actually ground the serrated blade off and made it like this, because serrated blades are limited in what you can do with them. Uh, anyway, same technique. Get a bend going. Get your get your weight over the tree. Ideally, yeah, your belly. Okay, now my belly's on the tree. Okay, now I can start cutting with my pocket knife. <laughs> okay. That's a two inch thick tree. Just took it down with a pocket knife in a couple seconds. You don't need a super knife that's indestructible to baton stuff like this. You need to know how to cut down trees with a pocket knife. That's a better survival skill. That'll save, I'll, that'll save you a lot of money. <laughs> skill saves money. All right, here we have a super tree from the idea of, oh, you need to be able to take down wrist thick sticks for for building structures, survival structures, okay? So this is a maple tree. That is, oh, 10, 20, 30, more than 30 feet high. Okay, at the base, it is substantial, okay? More than three inches at the base. This is the last one I'm gonna do. I think I've felled enough trees for one day. And I think I've made my point. With this little tiny knife, I'm gonna take this thing down without batoning, okay? let's. Let's see how she goes, all right? Let's make a little mark here so I can line my camera up, okay? All right, same process as before. We work it a little bit. This one's actually stepped up on a lot of stuff. We have to take it the other way. Nope. Go that way. How about this way? Yeah. yeah that's all right. Something. Yeah. The more bent over you can get it, the better. All right, that's a start anyway. That's about as far as I can get this one, it's just too big. But we got some some tension here. Let's see what we can do. This is almost four inches. Kind of blocking the camera here with my body, so I apologize for all that. Okay, so we'll start with a pull. 
Put it down a little further. Part of the problem here is I can't get the tree, can't get the tree down. Uh, I'm gonna change the angle here. It needs to come down. Stretched up on another tree, so it's not behaving. There we go. Right. A little bit more to the left, buddy. There we go. All right, now we got something. All right, you can just keep it on that angle. All right, now I got an angle I can work with. I got to change the camera angle. This is just no good. Now I got an angle I can work with. Let's put some pressure on her there. See what we can do. The more of a bend you can put on it, if you had two guys and another guy pulling down on it, or better yet, some, some rope to sort of put constant tension on the very tip of it, would be even better. Right, but you see, you see how it's coming along, right? Right, as we go, easier it gets, right? We got it, right? You get the idea, okay? I think I've made my point. This is almost four inches in diameter, and I went through it. A little bit of uh, difficulty, but that was mainly because it was so tall, it was fetched up in the other trees and I couldn't get it down. If I had to do more than one of these, I always got some paracord in my kit. I just didn't want to take the time to, to get that all set up because I was just doing one. But if I was going to do multiple trees of this diameter, right, I would just tie my paracord to a little stick, throw it up and get it as high as I can on the tree, right, and use that to pull the tree down from its top and tie it to something so it's bent right over 45 degrees or more. Incredible amount of tension, right, built up in the base near where I'm cutting. And that would just be a thousand times easier because instead of trying to pull the tree over from as high as I can reach, which for me is about seven, eight feet high, I'd be pulling it over from 30 feet high. I'd have incredible leverage. I'd pull the tree right down like it was nothing, tie it off to another tree, and then come over here and go to work. You'd go through in no time at all. Maybe I'll do that in another video. But anyway, the whole point of this video was to follow up on the previous one because I, I know there's going to be some people that say, well, that was a softwood tree and look how hard it was to go through because they don't understand wood and they don't have a lot of experience working with different types of wood. Uh, maple, birch, a lot of hardwoods, they have a really straight grain. You put a bend on those and get some tension, they just explode apart. There's really nothing, the hardest part is getting a little bit of bend into the tree, right? And with, a, with a, some paracord or some twine, it's even easier or with another person helping you. But once you've got that tree bent over 45 degrees and you start cutting cutting through the cutting through the grain, the thing just falls apart, right? It loses all its strength. That's why softwood trees tend to survive in the really windy places because they can handle all that bending. They give, they don't break, they give, right? And because they give like that, they're not working for you the way these kinds of trees are when you're using that rocking the knife, uh, you know, bending the tree, pushing on it sort of technique. But yeah, it doesn't take long to go through a tree with a relatively small knife, if you know what you're doing in your experience and you're not trying to sell $200 combat knives <laughs> that make you feel macho when you use them. This is a tool that you can use because it, it can do this without a baton and it can do all kinds of knife things so well. And I don't get any money from Mora. I called them, they didn't call me back and it, I don't have enough subscribers to even make an argument for that. I've had this knife for 20 years, maybe even more. I've had this knife for quite some time, okay? Um, and it's just got a plastic handle. This is an inexpensive knife. I probably bought it for 15 bucks on eBay years and years and years ago. Great little knife, always been a good knife. Anyway, I think I've made my point about um, batoning and why it's overrated and you don't always need to do it. And uh, one of the main things that people try to sell big, beefy, and destructible knives uh, on is the argument that you need to build a baton wood so that you can uh, build uh, survival structures, uh, shelters, right, to get out of the weather to survive. Um, so number one, you know, 
you shouldn't go in the woods without a good folding saw that you can trust, that you can rely on. Right, this silky gum boy is the one I tend to go with. Um, I think you can get one of these for 50, 60 bucks. Um, and uh, basically, the, you know, it's pretty hard to wreck or ruin one of these things. They're metal, they're reliable, they're stainless steel, they're just, just incredibly good performing knives, get the coarse blade. Um, so you're always going to have something like this unless you're, you know, being foolish. Um, but even if you don't have that, you can take down wrist thick trees that you can build for use for survival structures without batoning, without any of that. Just using one of these and a bit of intelligence and some understanding about tension and wood and how it works. And again, the main reason I did this video is because the previous one, I was using this technique on softwood trees and I thought some people might say, well, those woods are soft. They're easy to bend and break and to cut. And uh, those comments, I haven't seen any yet, but that comes from an, a lack of understanding of wood and how different types of wood work. <clears throat> the reason softwoods tend to grow in really windy places is that they can take bending. They don't behave the same way when they're under tension. They can be bent right over and they pop back up, whereas hardwoods break when you bend them. Okay, they're really hard, so they don't bend. So if you bend them, they don't like it. You put a bend in it and you start, you know, um, compromising the integrity of the grain, they just break, like I just showed you. These trees were easy to take down, right? And the only challenge I had with this one here was that there was other trees in the way up there, it was hard to bend it down. And if I had uh, some paracord, stuff like that, or a second guy, and I could actually, if I was going to take it on a bunch of these, I'd have some paracord, I'd throw it up into the tree, you know, use a, use a weight, you know, just, just tie a stick onto the end of the paracord, throw it up, get it over a branch, get a loop around that tree and pull it down, tie it to another tree, right? And then you can come back here. Now the whole thing's bent over 45 degrees under some serious tension and you're just going through it no problem, right? Especially I could, now because I have bent over, I could use two hands and really put something onto it. Thousand times less risky for your knife than batoning it, okay? And in the time it would take you to get a baton, uh, to, to fashion a proper baton, <laughs> I might be through this tree and on to the next one, okay? So, uh, I think I made my point about that and I hope uh, I hope that gave you something to chew on. Please, uh, you know, give me your comments. I'm, I'm interested in hearing them. Uh, I'm just I'm just mystified. I, you know, I've just... Uh, last couple days I've been watching uh, videos on knife reviews and these huge weapons that these guys seem to think you need to be out in the woods with. I mean, I've been doing this for years. I'm, I'm almost... I'm 49 years old. Uh, and I've been in a lot of situations in the wood. Sure, I'm not a professional survival instructor, instructor. I'm also not a professional knife salesman. <laughs> okay, I don't care what you buy. I'm trying to save you money. I don't care what you buy, uh, as long as you understand that, you know, you don't need to spend any more than 20 or 30 bucks to have all the knife you could possibly need in the woods. If you know how to use it, you know a few tricks, you don't baton the hell out of it, and you've got a folding saw with you. As I mentioned in the previous video, this with this is more tool than any $100 knife is ever going to offer you. Okay, you just got more tool here. All right. So, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.